Okay, so my name is Mano Van Squick. Most people call me Mrs. Van. I'm the founder of Ohio Nature Education. This is my oldest daughter, Tara. And what we do at Ohio Nature Education is provide a home for about 45 wild animals that we um, that can't go back out to the wild and then we do programs with them. 45 species or 45 animals? 45 animals. Okay. Okay. Come on in. All right, so uh, go ahead, Tara. This is me with Bellatrix, my Eurasian Eagle Owl. So that's part of my life. Go ahead. I'm telling you what to do if I see Yeah, would you like me to sit there and do it myself? No. I could? Okay. okay, so basically this is what we do, all right? We teach people how to impact wildlife in a positive way. I always say we're not animal rights activists or anti hunting or anything like that. I don't personally hunt, but, but that how we live our lives affects uh, nature and that we need nature. Okay, so this is our home, and what most people don't realize is we're out in Licking County, modest home, but in the backyard is where I keep all these animals. Historically speaking, for the last 26 years, Ohio Nature Education has been has run from our property. And before I did that, that I was um, a wildlife rehabilitator when we lived in Columbus. Okay, so this is our backyard. So just to give you an idea, I should have brought my laser pointer with me, and I did not. So I'm going to get up, but because sometimes when I say all oh, the animals live on my property, I worry you guys think they're in like cages like this. This right here is a red is a red tail hawk. Okay, so I mean these are we have huge enclosures. We we would do that anyway, but we're permitted permitted by U.S. Fish and Wildlife and Division of Wildlife, and they have minimum standards. We always exceed those, so they live good lives. All right, keep going. That's new, a couple of new enclosures. We're always building new enclosures. So this is my family. This is my husband, Jim, and then Tara, and her sister, Fallon, and myself. But what most people don't realize is um, when you, should we turn off the light? Would that help? Yeah, for sure. Okay. So when you take on wild animals, okay, perfect. See, now you can see it better, and I know you want to see a picture like this. These are some of our fruits. When you take on a wild animal and say, you're going to live with me for the rest of your life, I have to feed them as close to their natural diet. So our 25-ish hawks and owls eat my, mice, rats, chicks. And then, so that's, uh, we have five freezers um, full, uh, and there's fish, and there's roadkill deer, and there's muskrats. Uh, and I hope people that have pet rodents aren't too bummed, but as I say, I've got to feed them as close to their natural diet. And then on the right is um, writhing mealworms that I raise for the bats. So, okay, so this is two of my former volunteers. Imagine why they're I former. wonder why they're Yeah, okay, so years ago, we used to drive up to Michigan four times a year, and Charles River Labs was in existence, and they raise rodents for testing and whatnot. So they would donate to all the different wildlife rehabilitators and educators in Ohio, Michigan, Illinois, uh, you know. So we would go up there four times a year and fill the back of our vehicle with dead mice and rats. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And always so, hope that the police would pull us over. Yeah, one time <laughs> a, a cop pulled me over. I know it had to reek in the back of the car. I had garbage bags full. And I, no, you'd think he would have been saying, okay, I want to know what's in all those bags. So that I wanted to have that moment of saying, you'll never believe it. Nope, he just took my license. And I had to ask him to return it later, 30 months later after I paid my ticket. But anyway, wait, uh, uh, go back there. We used to have mouse bagging parties. When I got home, we drove four hours up, four hours back. And it was, we all had gloves on, and we would put them in Ziploc bags and whatnot. Unfortunately, with COVID, we lost that supply. So not only did COVID kick our butts from going 300 programs the previous year to 58 programs, and that's where we get a lot of our money, but we lost our food source. So that's what we try to do with doing a lot of programs and obviously doing fundraisers. So they got the biggest kick out of that. In fact, one of my board members' wives Whenever they would go to a wedding, a birthday party, a uh, family reunion, she would not stop telling the story of Fred is volunteering for this organization. And they, four times a year, you know, go and get mice, and, they, and he had to tell her, stop telling people that story. So 
Those were the mouse bagging parties. Okay, and then this is me going sheepishly to um, Staples and saying, I'm going to hand you something, and I need you to make a poster for me because volunteers don't come knowing what you feed a great horned owl versus what you feed a screech owl. So this is a poster that's hanging up. So, you know, I have to explain myself quite a bit when I do stuff like this, right? You hope Pete is not knocking on your door in the morning, so. Okay, this is my husband. On June 10th, it'll be 40 years that we've been married, and the man never planned to live a life like this. But it's been a mutual brainwashing. I know a whole lot more about sports than I ever planned to, and my <laughs> husband knows a whole lot more about wildlife, okay? He has so, a lot less air than what he has. Yeah, day. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so uh, he made the mistake, he, he was a, a letter carrier down in Clintonville for 34 years, and he said, I think I'm going to retire. I said, what do you think you're going to do? He said, I thought I would help you with the organization. So at his um, retirement party, I got him some Ohio Nature Education polo shirts and name badge. So we worked together and lived together for a number of years, but we wanted to make it to 40 years. So now I use volunteers and interns, and it's much better. And he's always happy to see me go and waves. Have a good day. Be safe. And let me tell you why we call him St. James, okay? You can go ahead. Okay. That is a woman holding a pileated woodpecker. Are you guys familiar with that? Well, I, I think I've seen a story in the local news how we thought it was an ivory woodpecker, uh, yeah, but it was right. actually one of those. Right. And I wanted to find a picture on Bing just to give you an idea because before, like I said, before I started Ohio Nature Education, I volunteered for the Ohio Wildlife Center and then I ended up running their clinic for a couple of years. And so Tara and her sister grew up with wildlife in the house, okay? So one of the first patients we had was an injured, pileated woodpecker. And we called Jim St. James because I um, said, I'm gonna hold this pileated and I need you to just cut the bandage off of the leg. And when, you see that beak, right? So when that beak did this to Jim's hand and he jumped back like four feet, I didn't have too much sympathy. Is there someone with a projector question? We got it. We got it. Yeah. Oh, okay. We got okay. it now. Thank you, though. You got no it. Thank you. So, unfortunately, guys, it's not that I'm heartless, but I never get beyond how lucky I am to be working with these animals. So he doesn't get much sympathy. And it's like, oh, come on, you big baby. Come on, get back here. And we've got to, you know, take this bandage off. And the reason I have a barn owl up is years ago. Uh, when I was at the Ohio Wildlife Center, we got in um, some baby barn owls. And Barnaby lived, I think, 30-something years, but he was in a tree cavity, and tree cutters came along and cut off part of his wing. So from the time we got him as a little downy baby, we knew he wasn't going out. So it was our opportunity to uh, habituate him and socialize him. So we brought him home one day, and okay, it sounds gross, but I always had a bottle of Resolve, and if he pooped, you know, I would clean it up. We were sanitary about it. So one day, uh, he did something. Somebody opened up the door, and he landed on Jim's head and went oh, no. down there. And again, I can't get beyond what an opportunity we have to have these animals in the house. So Jim doesn't always get sympathy. So I did clean up his head a little bit, and I think I remembered saying, you're all right. Now stop being a baby. Stop being, yeah, yeah, it's not a big deal. Think about it. You can tell the story of how a barn owl landed on your head. That's the important part. So that's why we say St. James. So these are some baby um, possums that we've raised along the way that were orphans. And remember when I told you we went up to Michigan to get some rodents? Well, one day I had a little pet taxi full of little possums because I had to feed them throughout the day. And Jim is driving down the road, going down the highway probably doing, I don't know, 60, 65 miles an hour. And he says, Mom, there's something crawling up my pant leg. And if somebody would have crawled up my pant leg and I'm driving, I wouldn't calmly be saying, Mom, there's something crawling up my pant So he is now holding his pant leg so that it won't go any further because he doesn't know yet what it is. I wouldn't have reacted that way and I work with wildlife. But it was just a little baby possum that had crawled out and decided to climb up his leg while we're driving down the road. So you see why we call him St. James? And he's pretty even-tempered about it all. Yeah. And then there was the story of I came home late one night and I said, Honey, 
come outside and help me carry um, this cage, okay? We're just going to put it out on the back patio. This is when I lived in, in uh, Columbus. And as we're carrying, I said, oh, and by the way, don't put your fingers up into the wire. Why? What's in it? A coyote. And we ended up releasing it the next day. So it's all in good fun, right? Okay. Whatever. Okay. So that's a dead tree. Can you see the dead tree? Okay. It's a what? Hazard. No. We put it there. I planted that dead tree. Not you. We. Not this one. You planted okay. the other one. Okay. All right. This is a dead tree that we planted. Believe it or not, dead branches. Okay. And these are very old pictures, guys. All right. Um, dead limbs and dead trees have a lot of value for wildlife. So unless it's going to fall onto your house, we keep them up, okay? Because uh, it feeds the woodpeckers. And the woodpeckers, I call them the carpenters of the bird world. They never reuse that hole, so maybe bluebirds or flying squirrels or whatnot. So um, a kingfisher, okay, about that big. They come in and they eat fish. This pond was put in and... Uh, Bass minnows were put in it and goldfish to feed the herons and feed the kingfishers. Kingfisher shows up one day before this tree was there, lands on that maple tree, and then he's getting aggravated because the limbs are real small. So I said, honey, we got to plant a dead tree. And this is, I didn't like the way the dead tree looked, so we actually put this branch on there with a bracket. So my neighbors think I'm nuts. It's okay. Uh, they figure he should have little bit more brains than I do because they already know I'm far gone with what I do for a living so we took post hole diggers and and put that tree in there and my neighbor was going by going up the driveway and he stops the truck and he said hey Jim I don't think that tree's gonna make it and just drives off laughing his butt off so anyway uh, yeah so we plant dead trees on my property so there's a wildlife value so my husband will help me do things like that so what do you think, guys? Would you do something like that? Oh, yeah. Okay, good then. Then you belong with our group. Okay, so here's Taryn, her younger sister, Fallon. You see that little grin on Fallon, right? Yeah. Okay, so Jim is the voice of reason in our house. I always say I'm the helium balloon, and Jim is the one that says, whoa, let's get with reality for a minute, okay? Because I always plan this big, and he wants to bring it down to that. So anyway, this is a baby fox that we had gotten. At the time, we had five indoor cats. Okay. We wanted to bring the little fox into the house. Jim says, don't do that. It's not a good idea. So we waited for Jim to go to work on a Saturday. And Fallon and I decided we would bring the, the fox in. And we were very smart. I don't have a big house. But you know, there's this, there's the kitchen, there's the living room, and then the long hallway. We close the bathroom door, we close the door going down into the utility room and to the three bedrooms, right? One thing we neglected to do until we realized that it was too late when we let the little baby fox in. My cats were all on, they weren't behind the doors, they were in the living quarters. So in comes this fox. Now he doesn't want to hurt him, he's just walking up, hey, what are you, you want to play? My cats were trying to climb the walls, okay? It was like popcorn. All of a sudden, you've got these cats doing this, doing this. And I think I told you earlier, but whenever situations like that happen, I handle it like a real adult, not. I start laughing hysterically, okay? So Fallon and I are both crying, and I'm trying to get her attention of, we've got to stop this, we've got to do something. All of a sudden, I find my cats in the living room curtains. You know, the tails are this big, their eyes are that big. <laughs> Once, and on the shelf, wrapped around my whale collection, you know, like a cartoon, you know, all shaped around <laughs> me. And we are just crying. There's a, a nice glass globe that's now been shattered up against the wall and glitter water everywhere. And about the time I started smelling the anal glands of the cats, I knew it was time to stop. So... Mm -hmm. By the time I got Fallon to stop laughing, and we could, this is not a good idea, 
let's catch that little fox, bring him back outside. And then, of course, we had to clean up and pretend like nothing happened and then make sure that you burned enough candles so that Jim wouldn't know what had happened. We told him three weeks later and he just shook his head. So every once in a while, Fallon and I bring up that story and just start howling as though um, we were living it right then. But my poor cats did end up forgiving me. But I had a major brain fart, obviously, that day. So. Two daughters, two different personalities. What do you always say about you? Before COVID, I was super extroverted and liked people. Yes, but, but you, don't you tell them, who do you introduce? When I say this is the two daughters. I'm the you good would, daughter. She says she's the good daughter. Okay. Both are good daughters. Yeah. Tara is just a lot more kind to her than, okay, than Fallon is. So Fallon is the second one, and this is at her 18th birthday. Okay. Now, when you live my life, and it's, this was in November, and you've got to feed 40-something animals, and you have freezers full of food, you put the food to thaw in a tote, and you bring it in the house. Nobody needs to know what's in it. It's a solid tote, right? So, it was her 18th birthday, and her friends were coming over to get her to surprise or take her out, whatever. And as we're getting ready for friends to show up, she mutters something under her breath of, I don't suppose we could get rid of the room uh, tote that's in the kitchen. So I went out to do animal care, and I have a lot of time. To and say, she's also always riding her about yes, stuff. Yes, my clutter. Her. I'm a clutter bug, okay? Jim's table next to his couch has hardly nothing on it. I have piles strategically, and I keep piling it, okay? So, I have a lot of time to think when I do animal care, and I came up with a scheme. And let me, well let me, before you hit it, Tara, hold on. So they all did their little thing and took pictures and whatnot. They said, okay, we're going to go now. We're going to take Fallon out to celebrate her birthday. I said, and I hadn't even told Dad, okay? I said, wait a minute, I made you guys something, and this is what I made them. <laughs> That is a plate of chocolate-covered mice. Yummy! And when I brought this plate out into the living room for a friend, I think the windows in the house cracked. They, they screamed so loud. She never did yell at me about that, but you see that? Never mess with a woman who has access to a tarantula and frozen rodents, correct? Mm -hmm. So, uh... What did you do with them afterwards? Oh, I'm sure I threw them out. Oh, Nothing can eat them. Well, I suppose I could have given him to the possum. So. so let me tell you a little story about a payback that's going to be coming up God, soon. let it go. Oh, no. No, no. Lord. No. We were out birding together recently. And apparently I was being a pest. Okay? So uh, she waited for me to put my bottle of Gatorade up to my face and floored the car. And we both whooped. And we laughed in the whole bit. She was laughing the hardest because I had a look on my face that said, I don't believe you just did that. So I'm going to pay her back. So I'm taking weeks and months. It'll be good, and it'll be better than the chocolate-covered mice. What do you think, Tara? Whatever. Okay, very good. Moving on. So speaking of dead trees, this is Tara's dead tree. I had read an article in Bird Watchers Digest, Julie Sikafoos, the artist had talked about you can plant dead trees. So. I actually mentioned it, and Tara says, let's go. So we actually, and you never take a dead tree down. It's a tree that has fallen already. So we dug holes, put quick creek and the hose in it, and that actually ended up having a lot of birds and whatnot come to it. It's hard to see, but there is a rose brush that grows speak on um, the bird feeder on the tree. Yeah, and a bunch of goldfinches and whatnot. So this is Tara. So, this is your part of it. What did I used to make you and your sister do when you were young? Pick up roadkill. Huh? Okay. We picked up roadkill. She made us hurry up and get out of the car and pick up roadkill. Well, what does and this not have just to do regular roadkill. Yeah. Hey, hey. Skunks. What does this have to do with? Oh, I can see it here. That's why I'm... Yes. I'm sorry. That's okay. What did my mother... What did I, what I, where did I make you and your sister go? We made us go birding when we were young, and I can picture us at... Uh, Greenland Cemetery, and I read uh, lots and lots of books and found played with Polly Pockets, which I don't understand how you play with a plastic doll that doesn't do anything. 
um, and now I'm a librarian, I wonder why. Um, so she made us go birding and I hated every second of it. And then at some point you realize you start to enjoy things or that your parents aren't going to be around forever. So you want to spend more time with them and that's what she liked to do. And then look, uh, I started to enjoy it. So um, the far picture to the far left is Olpen and that was our trip to Honduras. The middle one is our guide from Belize and then uh, on the far right is a trip to Arizona. And where are we going in July? Hopefully, hopefully we're going to Colombia in July. Um, there is a volcano that is uh, spewing ash and gases every so often and uh, we're already going to be 44,000 feet above sea level. Um, so <laughs> a little uh, worried about that, but yes, I, I bird watch on my own now and enjoy it very much. So mom being mean and making her daughters go bird watching, they're both bird watchers, so I love it. And Fallon feeds the birds, I don't know yes, if she's a bird watcher. Well, she's a lazy bird watcher. Okay, there we go. And this is what we were talking yes. about. I'm a visual learner. I'm a visual teacher. So, but when she I, says I'm a, or I have animals, or the let's let's that's my favorite. Let's unload the car. That means go unload the car. Yes. You know, let's means let us. Yes. No, not I. Human. We were out, and I found a roadkill skunk, and I needed the pelt, so I said, get out of the car and get the. And no, Mom, I'm not going. No, Mom, I'm not going. Like oh, yeah, and I was very hygienic about it. I even brought pink baby powder scented trash bags. Wasn't it, like, right outside my high school? Yeah, that's minutes? what she was worried about, is that her, one of her friends would see it. Maybe they'd take up a collection. Or not poor, friends. Poor Tara's, poor Tara's family. Uh, they're probably putting that skunk in the crock pot. So, uh, no, it was good. But she forgave me. And then these are some of her favorite. You know which one we don't have on there? Which one? Is the back one. So oh, yes. when we lived in Dublin, we lived in a condo, and this is when Mom ran Ohio Wildlife Center, and uh, we had lots of animals coming into the house. We have to take care of most animals. We need 24 hour care. Um, so one of the bats got loose one time, and I'm a light sleeper, so the chimes in my sister and I's room were not moving, but there was no fan, the windows weren't open, and I'm like, what the hell? So I flipped the light on, and there was a bat doing laps around the ceiling, lap, lap, lap. Um, so I wake her up, and uh, her, my stepdad, and I are in our bedroom trying to catch a bat, and my sister slept through the whole damn thing. <laughs> and then I said, Tara, how did you know there was a bat loose in your room? She said, I heard the chime as it was going by. Yes. Uh, yeah, we've talked about the baby ducks. The wine, they look like little wind-up duckies in the bathtub, both wood duck, mallard. Yes. Yeah. Um, big, fun fact, baby birds uh, have to be ed fed every two to three hours. No, they get fed from sun up to sun down okay. every 30 minutes. Okay. And so if you walk by the door, they're going to start screaming. The door really quietly, but we had to feed baby birds quite a bit. Um, and then raise your hand if you have allergies. Anybody have allergies? Is anybody allergic to deer saliva? We are. <laughs> and we found that out one night when we were taking care of a fawn. And it kept licking us. And all of a sudden, I start scratching myself. I said, guys, you can't eat eaten alive by mosquitoes. And I had these big welts. Well, we're both asthmatics. I had to go into the shower. And when I told people that, um, there's some rehabbers that are uh, allergic to raccoon saliva, too. Now, you don't find that out unless you're working with these. Right. That's, that's yeah, one of those. For that. Yeah, yeah. No. Two truths and a lie. That's, right. a, that's a really good one for that. Yeah. So, but yeah, I kept going. Man, and then I saw these big welts, and like my asthma started kicking. It's like I better go take a hot shower. But yeah, so yeah, my daughters. Um, I mean, you know, they were used to having wildlife in the house. It took them years to realize that everybody lives like this. Yeah. So. Native animal, you know, mostly native Ohio animals, but um, you never know what we had or what was running around or what was traveling with us because we could never go on vacation without an animal that needed to. So many hours. Even when I go on vacation, people find I find sick, injured, or from wildlife. I've had to take care of geese, baby robins, a little bit, and I have taken baby bats on vacation before, which I would never do now because 
I would be off because you don't take um, mammals across state lines, but this was yours. All right, shall we go on? This is my mother. She's no longer with us. In fact, this weekend she'll be gone for 13 years, but she was a happy-go-lucky, smiling, happy little funny woman. Yes? She had a heavy French accent. We're originally from Canada. My mom had to mentally prepare to come and stay at my house because she never knew what was going to happen. Go ahead. She wanted to make sure that you know what's going yeah. on. She, she's afraid of, so afraid of snakes. She would say to me, Men are the you know what's going to be gone. It was mom, you could say the word snakes. Now, this is mom, and I could tell by the look on her face that she's officially had it. She's been in my house too long. Okay? Put my because, shoes on. Them. I mean, it was like she would say, I can't wait to get back to my people. Uh, go ahead and hit that. <clears throat> because, for example, one day, her and I were just going to go into Johnstown. And I'm halfway through Johnstown, and I find a injured squirrel. So I'm not letting a squirrel just lay there suffering, even if it means I have to euthanize it, okay? Because I, I believe in ending suffering. So I get out, and I catch it, and I put it in the back of the car. We go in and run our errands on our way back home. Now I have to stop because I've got to help a turtle across the road. And I just told you, Mom's afraid of snakes, right? And I, she said, she was talking to God in French, she said, Dear God, please don't let her find a snake or I'm walking home. So anyway, Mom had to, she needed a break after she came to my house because you never knew what was going to happen. So, go ahead. All right, and she loved to go apple picking and she loved to go strawberry picking, depending. Um, and she lived up in northern New York near the Canadian border. So one year she was all excited because I said, Mom, we got to go pick some, some blueberries. And she said, oh my goodness, I can't wait till we get home. We'll make some really good recipes. I said, no, 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 Mom, these aren't for us. This is for the cedar waxwing that we were keeping uh, as an ed animal. She was so ticked. Was like, I don't believe I was out here picking blueberries. Uh, and it's for, I believe she called it a stupid bird. Okay, so, but anyway. She would say, uh, move these animals out, put a roof over, get me a bathroom, and I'll move into the cages. The, into the enclosures, yeah. yeah. And she'd say, these animals eat better than your family does. Yeah, and they do live good life. So we've had quite a few crows in our career. We've had a Bell crow. We've had an Edgar Allan crow. I say, uh, we had a Russell crow. Yeah. yeah. I say the next one we'll get will be crow bar. Okay? Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, again, this is when we were in Columbus. Uh, we had one that we were getting used to everybody because he was going to be an, an animal and mom was sitting on the couch and I let him loose. And you know, it's funny, I've met people that will say, I don't like cats. Well, cats hear that and they're like, oh no, you're not. So they, you know, animals just, you're saying you don't like cats, I will make you change your mind. So I wanted all these animals to like me. Mom wanted the opposite. So all of a sudden this crow starts hopping towards my mother and I'm sitting on the floor and every time it moves closer to her she does ah! okay and it hops again <laughs> and closer to her and she goes ah! and it hops oh you sound like me yeah <laughs> and it hops on the couch and my mother gets up and runs into the bathroom shuts the door the best part is we hear her pushing the lock and I just started howling because I envision what's the crow going to do put his claw up there and unlock the door. So I'm, again, acting like an adult now. I'm in hysterics on the floor, and my husband looks at me and says, you're sick, because my mom was obviously upset. So now you know why mom had that pissy look on her face, because she'd had enough with our household. This is Drew. Drew was my one of my Mother's Day stories from many years ago. Again, guys, we have to watch what we're doing during spring and summer, because Every, every one of these animals is having babies. So again, down comes a tree, and there's three little baby screech owls, okay? Drew ended up being injured, and we knew he was never gonna go back out. In fact, he was so cold and wet, I didn't think he was gonna live, okay? Couple hours with some nice warm Pedialyte, and uh, on a heating pad, he was good to go. But we ended up keeping him. He could never go back out. The good story about his two siblings is we got a screech owl nesting box. We took it to the property. We put it on the tree adjacent to their original nest uh, tree. And Jim and I stayed there and hid until 
we could hear the babies calling in their parents when we saw a parent laying on the box. We knew we had a happy family reunion. But Drew had a compound fracture. So that means he had exposed bones, so we could not put him out until that totally healed. So Drew lived in the house with us. Okay, go ahead. That was him, the little fluff ball. And let me tell you, he might have looked cute. He was clacking his beak and doing this with his feet, even though he was that little. So this is him in our kitty condo. Okay? <laughs> now, I used to put him on that little perch, and people would come over, and they never knew that he was there, or they thought, wow, that lady's weird. She's got a stuffed bird in her ass. One of my, David Francis, our uh, website creator, one day said, man, oh, that thing just moved. I didn't know that. I said, yeah. So anyway, he would sometimes hop down the basement stairs and go watch, well, my husband would tell you, he was watching the Buckeyes with him, whatever. And then, of course, we would lock him up. The cool thing, guys, is my cats knew never to touch him. Ernie was my ornery cat, and I would know if I was in my office and Drew was just hanging around and whatnot, if Ernie was going near him. And he wasn't going to pounce on him, he would just try to pat <coughs> him, because the owl would start making the whoop, whoop sound, and I'd say, Ernie, leave that bird alone. So he lived with us, and then he ended up in the doggy <laughs> dish, taking baths, and then sat on a soccer ball talking to Lily the dog. <laughs> and my family was so mad that once he healed, I said, he has to live outside with the other owls. So this isn't, we used to give him a Christmas tree every year. And it, guys, it was kind because he had a partial wing amputation, right? He used to use it like a spiral staircase. So you'd walk into his enclosure and you'd hear him calling from that there. But he was awesome because you could just take a perch, put it in front of him, and he'd hop up on it and go to program. Unfortunately, we lost Drew. Uh, to West Nile virus some years later. But he educated so many people, and uh, he had a good life. He was a dude. Uh, he was a character, guys. We just really loved him. So this is just some of the stories and some of the animals that we have had to share our lives with. This is one of the many opossums that we've lived with. We love opossums at Ohio Nature Education. And that, that was two, these two foxes. These were the first two foxes. I ever had at one point we had eight we're down to one and she's 14 years old and old oh, enough wow. to have arthritis and we won't be replacing her but this is uh, these were both bought as pets and then people don't want them as pets anymore so Lolo how much they poop, I'm sorry how much foxes poop and, and smell like a skunk smell and dig how and wow. chew yes so Lolo on the right uh, is a silver fox she lived 16 years uh, Jasmine on the left lived 14 years. She lived long enough to get cancer and whatnot, but that was part of their enrichment. And of course, we have bats. That was my first love. When people say to me, what's your favorite animal? It's always between bats and great horned owls. I still love my bat. Of course, we've had our crows. We had one that used to untie our shoelaces. Did they ever bring the shinies? Uh, no, we gave them plenty of shinies, though. This is, <laughs> they did have one that hooted at us. Well, yeah, he heard the great horned owls hooting, so he would imitate <laughs> uh, a uh, great horned owl. This is Houdini, who I talked about earlier, that got loose in our house. Uh, the flying squirrel, that's the name Houdini. It took us about an hour to catch him. Again, how did I handle it? I went into hysterics, slapped my butt off, so we could catch him. And of course, you got to have a turkey vulture. Or you two. know, Yeah, we have two, Igor and Ichabod. And you know their defense mechanism is to vomit. So when I go in, I make sure that, uh, you know, we go ahead and make sure that they stomp their feet, hiss, and vomit before I put them in a crate so I don't have to smell it driving down the road. Mm -hmm. This is my Ibu. We lost him in 2020. I had him for over 20 years. He was my awesome great horned owl. I still have two, but they're nothing like Ibu. Oh my gosh. No, they're very hyper. He used to toot on my glove and whatnot, and he was a victim of West Nile virus also. He survived it, but not without a paralyzed wing. So you know what? I've met some interesting people, but I've never met anyone quite as interesting as some of the animals that I work with. So we feel very, very fortunate to be working with these guys. So that's just part of the stories of growing up in a wildlife household. My daughters are say they're going to write a book, and I say wait till I'm dead to publish it. So, anyway, that's what it's like to live in a crazy household. Yes.
Never a dull moment. Even as an adult now that I don't live there. Yes. She's still involved. She's on the board, so. Unlike my bad sister. Oh, who moved out of state. But will call me for advice on uh, on wildlife. And is getting ready to move to Oahu, which we will go yeah. see her to go birding. Absolutely. All right, any questions or comments? What determines which animals you have? Uh, when I first started, most people start with two little birds, okay? A screech owl and a kestrel. Not me. I had to be the big show off and I had a red tail hawk and a great horned owl. Then you get these things home and you know you've put their perches up here and then you're looking at great horned owl talents right there near your head and you realize, I've got to train that wild owl. So when the girls were in school and Jim was at work, I would put the cats downstairs, see? I can think sometimes. <laughs> and put a towel on the arm of the couch and plug in a movie and Ibu would sit on my arm. That's how we got him acclimated. So in the beginning, like I think I said earlier that we have placement pages and, and sites and whatnot, and then sometimes we actively go looking for them. Right now, I'm not really looking for it. I'm not actively looking. We're supposed to get a skunk or two, we'll see. But it just kind of unfolded. What do you need, honey? The bag? Okay. Um, yeah, so I mean, they have to be non-releasable. Um, so a vet is going to sign off on a letter. And U.S. Fish and Wildlife is very picky about that. Um, unless they send me that letter that says, yes, you can have that animal, which could come in a matter of hours now that we have internet. But they're very picky about we don't go and get that animal until. Now, Jim and I have traveled before. We went to uh, North Carolina to get Raleigh, our barred owl. We drove to Kansas to get Oz. Uh, our other barred owl, and then some of them we've had shipped in, but it all depends what we're looking for. Now that we're having to buy our rodents, so when COVID hit, and then we lost our free food stores after I quit the panic attack, and we figured out it costs us just for the birds prey about $25,000 a year, because now we're buying mice, rats, chicks, whatever. Yeah. We went from free for all these years, but we're not the only ones that were affected. I mean, right. rehabbers, educators in the in that whole area. But um, it's crazy that they had enough to give them all. I know. Like and then we reached people. out to other Charles River Labs. Well, they were already, you know, taking care of the other rehabbers that were in their area. So right now we're kind of being. I don't think we're going to get any other birds, though. My volunteers really want me to get another crow. What's nice about crows is they're omnivores, so I can feed them cat food, dog food. But the birds of prey can only eat meat. So, you know, the foxes, the possums, and the squirrels, we get food donated from pet stores and Wild Birds Unlimited. That's not as bad. The produce has gotten really expensive for them, which we only feed in the warm months. But um, so right now we're not actively, actively looking to replace birds. So and if any of you are from Delaware County, we have a partnership with Preservation Parks of Delaware County, and um, there is uh, there are three enclosures up at Deerhaven Park, uh, which they built, and then we bring our birds up down a rotating basis. So the barred owls, the great horned owls, and the screech owls spent the winter up there. Right now, there are two red-tailed hawks, two turkey vultures, two red-shouldered hawks, and then probably about August, I'll bring the falcons up there, and that's just a partnership to help people know what we do and hopefully we get more donations and whatnot. So but yeah. That's that. That's our life, isn't it? It's been interesting, hasn't it? Yeah. It's not been dull. Nope. Thank you. No, Thank you. no problem. I caught a baby squirrel one time. You caught a baby squirrel? Well yeah. I yeah. Got, I caught it because oh shoot. I picked up a log and it jumped out so I dropped the log in. Yeah. I picked it up and I uh, I didn't take it home, but I gave it to my foreman who kept it on the uh, two old bedding scheme as a cat cage yeah. and some bedding. Yeah. And we put it in there. But then sadly, the foreman, his son let it out of the cage, it swore around the tree, and the cat followed it. Yeah, oh yeah, that happens a lot. And I love cats, but we try to teach people about keeping cats indoors if you can because they, they, create a lot of damage and whatnot. Let me put this in there, buddy. Thank you. Yeah. Uh.
Well, by the way, this is not the skunk that Tara picked up. <laughs> what a bummer. It'd be kind of huh? old. Huh? That would be kind of old. Yes, no kidding. All right, guys, thanks for coming. We're going to be pulling out the birds here, I think, at about 5 a month again to get your pictures taken. Yeah. Right? So I guess I better think about running upstairs and getting them. Well, don't you have another program? Oh, no, this was, was this yeah. program? For today, yes. Okay. Please, right. Tara. That's enough. Guys, thanks for coming and listening. Silver Gato Man, he bought me a coffee. Silver Gato Man, here is the song for thee. He likes to video all the panels at the cons. You should go and watch them whether they are short or long. Silver Gato Man, you video that's not a jibe. All of you go to his YouTube channel and like and subscribe.